adversation to absolutism. The somewhat predictable adversation to absolutism when you know the person who happens to be making this homework assignment. He is a person called Murdoch, Modoku, Madoku, Mao, Dong, Mao Dong, or etc. Wait, or wait, <coughs> Ex or etc. Mm. Face palms, uh, etc. Fine, I'm an agreeable person. You can call me etc. <sighs> Face palm. Absolute monarchy or absolutism meant that the sovereign power or ultimate authority in the state rested in the hands of a king who claimed to rule by divine right. It was argued that the government was divinely ordained so that humans could live in an organized society. God established kings and through them reigned all over the peoples of the world. Since kings received their power from God, their authority was absolute. They were responsible to no one, including parliaments, except God. Jacques Spanin Busset was a French bullet bishop and theologian. Jean Baudin, a French jurist and political philosopher. Absolutism is a political system in which one ruler or leader has complete power and authority over a country. Divine right of kings, divine right monarchy, historical terms, history, the concept that the right to rule derives from God and that kings are answerable for their actions to God alone. The right to rule derived directly from God, not from the consent of the people. Comment, oh gish, divine right monarchy looks sketchy. From me, agnostic, modern-day perspective, yes. Murdoch person, I believe myself to be an unreliable narrator, so it's hard for me to relate to these absolute monarchs and their populaces. I saw this famous quote in, this, in an essay book before, and my heart sang, See, uncertainty is an uncomfortable position, but certainty <laughs> is an absurd one. Bold. I'm just throwing in shite. All right, I have a table of contents. Here with Korean, <laughs> you can look at that. Uh, ko, ti, pa, ha, sha, kyo, wa, ge, tio, kwa, ryo, kwa, kwa. What is absolutism in theory, and how was it practiced in different European nations? Question one, part one. What was absolutism in theory? Absolutism is a step up from basic oligarchy. The video, what was absolutism, <laughs> what was absolutism, AP Euro, bit by bit, hashtag 20 by Paul Sargent, <laughs> sums up absolutely nicely in tubal bits, I am crazy! <laughs> Number one, in absolutism, the sovereignty of a country is supposed to be embodied in the person of the ruler itself. The absolutist rulers were not subject to national assemblies or whatnot, nor were absolutist rulers subject to the will of the people. How was, question part two, <laughs> how was absolutism practiced in different European nations? Nigh all European nations intimidated. What? Intimidate? Louis XIV, uh, the 14th. France, with its nobility having little say in politics and being really subservient to the ruler themselves. Uh, absolutism was practiced with the nobles' power to administrate taken away and had the absolutist ruler ruling with his bootlicking intendants. Bootlicking. I love you. How do you think you say so? <laughs> and then, Ron Ho, uh, subsequently, the power was given to bureaucrats hired by the king. As loyal, <laughs> As loyal folk to the king to carry out things that the nobles used to do. In fact, this is a bit of a weird transition. Even to make the king guy more powerful, some monarchs <laughs> even gave titles of nobility to bureaucrats who carried out the loyalty and really did whatever the king wanted them to do, then gaining more control of the church and what had appointed officials inside of a country that made the monarch even more absolute and allowed the message of the church to back up the message of the monarch. There is also a growth of large standing armies which created security in a state and showed the power of the absolute monarch to wage war against Thai's political enemies. What? Okay. <laughs> now quoting an earlier bit of the textbook, larger armies and navies could be maintained by levying heavier 
making war, war a greater economic burden. I'm quoting this because with all this absolutist stuff, all I can see is debt. Finally, some monarchs employed secret police to go and infiltrate, infiltrate my ears, Ugh. the population and find out who's actually subverting the monarchy. This section was paraphrased from a video aforementioned. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so likely too specifically, other nations practiced absolutism in a similar manner, give or take a few details. <laughs> From my class notes, the dilettantes, or wannabe absolutist European nations, were Prussia, arguably Denmark, and Sweden, plus the actual absolutist European nations were arguably Denmark, Russia, and patently France. If I use the word dilettantes in regard to European nations, I am personifying European nations well that is not intentional, just due to my limited vocabulary. That's just due to my limited vocabulary. Comment. Ha! <laughs> the first part of the question implied a subjunct... Did it really? Subjunctive mood thing out? What is that? Um, en realis mood or something? Correct? Yeah, I really don't know. That is a proper tag question, tag question. Because of phrasing in theory, right? Another really strong tag question. So why am I putting this in there? Jeff, oh, pre-social contract days. Oh, salad days of history, Motaria. <laughs> there is a web browser extension called Dissenter. That is a soi disant comment section of the internet. It is both a web application and an open source browser extension. Dissenter organizes conversations around individual URLs and creates a soi disant <laughs> public square on them where anyone can leave a comment. I done again, I don't know. If much about the extension, I don't know much about the extension. I had to cross out if. I really, you do need to get rid of that if. <laughs> I really should pro proofread this more. Did it last minute, I guess. I glued it quick. But twas <laughs> what inspired me to make comments on the bits I highlighted from the text on the subject of absolutism. Textbook snippet. The tell. The was. Oh, this is a text just for existing, right? No. Okay. And a, an annual direct tax, usually levied on land or property, was increased in 1643. I gotta find what's the tax for just living, like breathing. That's, that's a funny one. The idea of the tell reminds me of the ludicrousness of civil asset forfeiture laws. Actually, this is not a bad example. C. Civil forfeiture. Last week's night with John Oliver. HBO. Also, C. <laughs> the three uh, colon oh five time stamp of the video, of such video. Unfamiliar with the idea of civil, oh God, <laughs> of civil forfeiture, which is already a case brought against, directly against a piece of property, wait, no, which is actually a case brought against directly, brought, okay, too many words, against, directly against, brought directly against a piece of property where you don't need to be proven guilty of a crime for your goods to be taken away. Exactly. Wait, I need periods and whatnot here. You don't need to be charged with a crime because it's not you that's on trial. It's your stuff. I really need to... Grammar, come on. Civil for forfeiture in the USA is seemingly Shintoistic, as in personifying inanimate objects and redoubtably, redoubtably, <laughs> risible. I've always thought along the lines of a guy I rhapsodized, David D. Friedman, the, the cool one, who wrote Property Rights. The cool one is obviously the one who's the economics, the son of Milton Friedman, uh, the shorthand. I'm sorry, he probably doesn't appreciate such shorthand, but as a shorthand, everyone knows. Property rights are not the rights of property. They are the rights of humans with regard to property. In this book, The Machinery of Freedom, I've also come to think that a tax on one's property is an indirect tax. Tax. More easily marketed Machiavellian text on one's labor. What am I saying there? In class, twas said, twas a tax just for the sake of taxing mostly. Okay. Textbook snippet. In tundons. And then I have the Korean pronunciation. In uh, ten. Well, I'll be making out taunts, no? To the provinces. To execute orders of the central government. See page 441. Comment. 
the idea of a monarch having intendants is definitely a smart one from the monarch's perspective. Tis a nice way to consolidate power. Tis redolent of a president picking justices or using tacitly guaranteed picks for what them? No, tacitly guaranteed pick for the leader of the World Bank. The U.S. has that advantage. I didn't mention that directly, though. I kind of, what am I implying? Do I expect him to know? I don't know. Christ. Textbook snippet. The nobles who particularly resented the centralized administrative power being built up at the expense of the provincial nobility. See page 441 under heading <laughs> Cardinal Mazarin comment. I imagine this quote from the textbook as a sort of comment on this textbook snippet. <laughs> Which hello understood the influential role played by the nobles in the French state, the dangerous ones, were those who have asserted their territorial independence when they were excluded from participating in the central government. Proceeding slowly but determinedly, Relais Richerelu developed an efficient network of spies to uncover noble plots and then crush the conspiracies and execute the conspirators, thereby eliminating a major threat to royal authority. See page 440. Hobbes's name has since been associated with the states to absolute authority over its subjects, a topic that he elaborated on in his major treatise on political thought known as the Leviathan. Hobbes claimed that in the state of nature, before society was organized, human life was solitary, life was solitary, <laughs> poor, nasty, brutish, and short. Comment, as a wannabe crestomathic, belonging to or devoted to useful knowledge or learning. Person, without much exposure to history, I am interested in the origin of Hobbes's idea that a state's absolute authority was necessary. Twas the unwieldy nature of trying to manage an ever-growing, exponentially growing population. Or did he write satirically, like Machiavelli? Who oh, do we know? Who oh, do, do we know? Textbook snippet. Bishop Jacques Bousset talked heaps about divine right monarchy. God established kings and through them reigned over all the people of the world. They were responsible to no one, including parliaments, except God. See page 440. Comment on ha 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 five five five, including parliaments. Might be a reference to Cromwell's parliament that tried, convicted, and executed for high treason in January 1649. See a link to the court justice Charles Charles I. Five five five. The tie variation of la five ties pronounces ha ha ha. Three of them being ha 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 ha. Textbook snippet Jean Baudin believed that sovereign power consisted of the authority to make laws tax administer justice, control the state's administrative system, and determine a foreign policy. Comment. Looks like humanity. Z I need a I need a plural there. Earlier attempt at handling the coordination problem of managing heaps of people living together in one society sort of is redolent of thinking about how people used to believe that the Potomac Potomac system or the Taichonic system, is a superseded description of the universe with, uh, I didn't phrase this right, did I? With Earth at the center. David D. Freeman again, as a, <laughs> and a soi disant again, a soi disant, anarchist, anarchist, <laughs> economic, economicist, jokes about the modern feeling heaps of us feel when we think about how our ancestors handled problems such as social organization, well, not really. Mostly he likens discussions of trade policy to Potomac astronomy. The economic argument for protective tariffs is out of date by 200 years. I like to say that reading public discussions of trade policy... I feel like this is how people talk or something? What the heck? I feel as if I was reading a discussion of the moon shot written in terms of Potomac astronomy, where we worried about whether the Apollo capsule would crash into a crystal, into the crystal and sphere that's carrying the mood around. But nonetheless, we get tariffs because they benefit a concentrated, concentrated interest group at the cost of the dispersed. David D. Freeman, anti 
monarchy an opposition to the rule of by a monarchy arch monarchy the chief or principal monarchy aristo monarchy rule by the best or most qualified monarchy old pork or old old tochri absolute sovereignty despotism self government an art an autocratic government by one person with unlimited authority over others Otoch, an absolute ruler. <sighs> Cryptarchy. Cryptarchies, a secret government or governments that rule secretly. Hiroachi, the rule of the government, wait, rule or government of heroes. See warrior kings. Hyperarchy, an excess of government. Monarchal, of pertaining to or of the nature of a monarchy that is under the dominion of a monarch. Omniarch. A ruler of all things, Panarchy, Pantarchy, Panarchies, Pantarchies, a state in which the rule of government is vested in all the people, rule over the entire or all of the universe, a universal realm such as the starry Panarchy of space or the Panarchy of created things. See the website wordinfo.info. I like their URL thing.